they're getting Andrew Tate up out of here. <laughs> you should not be listening to Andrew Tate for any guidance on life. Like there's so many people in the public eye that have horrible ideals and that are just, they're not good role models to look up to. And I say this all the time, people don't have a platform without the people that support the platform. I don't take these people seriously. Like all, all of these podcast dudes that are coming out and saying all this crazy stuff. I don't take it serious. I do understand wanting to get rid of the like that toxic way of thinking as much as possible. But it's still going to exist with or without Andrew Tate. back to my channel i'm back in the video and we're gonna be reacting to andrew tate top 10 savage and blatant rants of 2022 so i wanted to react to this video not so much for the compilation but just so i could talk about um andrew tate um he has been making his rounds around social media um people have referred to him as the next kevin samuels in regards to him giving this uh raw and uh unfiltered advice in terms of not even just because i mean with the kevin samuel stuff that was more so like dating and, and marriage and stuff like that andrew tate he just be saying the wildest stuff about just life in general but he has made some misogynistic uh comments and just a lot a lot of problematic things when it comes to just uh, literally everything like everything that you could think of he has just had a crazy like thing but what's crazy too is that similar to kevin samuels and I've, I've watched people right i've watched other people react to him and you know i've seen his clips a lot of people have echoed the same types of thoughts that they had about kevin samuels which was that they both were saying things here and there that you could agree with and you kind of got the gist of what they were saying. But because of how they were saying it and the context in which they were saying it, it came across as very disrespectful and rude and people couldn't digest what they were saying because of how they were putting those statements out there. And so with Andrew Tate, it's kind of like the same thing um, that happened with Kevin Samuels where people are now catching wind of all of these uh, podcast clips and um all this advice that he's been giving mind you he's been on youtube for a minute same thing with kevin samuels um but he just caught a lot of wind um recently i don't know what specific thing made him famous on the internet i know with kevin samuels it was him you know berating that that uh woman and telling her to rate herself and don't use seven um but i don't i don't know what got andrew tate um on people's radars but here's the thing and i said something similar to this with kevin samuels i can't remember if i made a video but yeah i i said this in my kevin samuels video about how um listen when it comes to these two i me personally i'm just speaking for me please do not attack me for this but for me right i don't take these people seriously like all all of these podcast dudes that are coming out and saying all this crazy stuff i don't take it serious and i think that's why like when it comes to people like you know him or kevin samuels i don't get all like i don't get in my feelings about it i don't get in my feelings about it i don't get all enraged about it because i just don't take it serious I take it as jokes. I take it as pure entertainment and that's it. I'm not actually seeking advice from these people. I'm not taking them seriously. Like I'm literally just watching it for pure entertainment. And for me, when I see or hear stuff that is just so like ridiculous and just has no substance, it's hard for me to take it seriously. And so I laugh at it because I'm like, 
this is so ridiculous. I don't see how anybody could actually, like, think that these people are being, like, for real. And maybe Andrew Tate is being for real in some of the, the things that he says. But, again, it's just it's so ridiculous. Like, him saying that, like, I don't know, women can't drive. Like, I, I'm not gonna get all, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's it's entertainment. It's funny. I laugh it off and I move on with my day. And my whole thing too, is like, if you don't like what they say and if their content gets to you that badly, I would just say don't watch them and don't support them. But, you know, people have been coming um, at his neck, <laughs> similar to Kevin Samuels, and it has come out that um, they took away his instagram i believe they banned him off of instagram i don't know if they banned him off of twitter or if he was even on twitter but they're getting andrew tate up out of here <laughs> they are literally taking away this every single one of his platforms i don't know again i don't know if he has a youtube channel um and that's the thing too i don't even know what platform he he stays on i don't know if he's on instagram i don't know if he's on uh youtube i don't know if he's on twitch i don't even know where he does his content at because i don't follow him but they're taking all his stuff away because of the things that um have been said and you know to each their own um these social media companies they can dictate who they want on their platform and what kind of content they want to expose on their platform if they feel like someone is breaking their terms of service and doing something horribly wrong then they have every right to take someone off of there um and so you know there's that but again it's just like i'm just not one of those people that's just like so enraged at the things that he's saying i just kind of take it as a joke and i move on but I don't know, but we're going to see what these top 10 savage and blatant rants are. But, you know, I say these things and people really genuinely think I'm crazy. Yeah. But I, I, I mean everything I say. My whole life was hardship. And, and to some degree, I try and make sure my life retains some degree of hardship. Mm. Uh, my, my father was the OG. I was raised by probably the best father on earth. I really genuinely But he wasn't that. around? It, it, but a father doesn't have to be around. This is a big mistake. This is another big mistake, especially among the conservatives and the trad cons and all this crap. The idea that fa- and see when he <laughs> when he says stuff like that, it's like, like obviously it's important for your father to be around. And I, as someone who didn't have their father around, I'm not even getting all worked up over this. It's just like, okay, that's what he said. Again, I can't tell if he's trolling or not. And that's another thing too. It's like this man could actually be putting on an act. That's the crazy part. Like. Yes, it it could be serious because of the tone that he's speaking in and how hard he's going about it. But people troll on the internet all the time. But also people portray themselves in a way that's not real. Whatever his persona is on the internet, that might not even be how he is in real life. You know what I mean? Father needs to sit around like a second mother to make the child healthy. It's, it's a fallacy. In fact, I'd say it's detrimental to the child. I see all these dudes out here, they have a kid and they basically become mother number two. Why? The mother keeps the child alive. As a father, it's your job to be impactful. You need to guide. You need to be a role model. You need to be a superhuman. Everyone should look at their father like a superhero. Okay. That's what you should genuinely view him as. It's hard to be a superhero if you're home every day arguing with your wife changing diapers. That's not what a man should do. A man should rock up, teach lessons, be impactful, and it's more about quality as opposed to quantity of time. When I was Again, I'm not really taking this seriously, but just for the sake of, of conversation. Um, I, I don't agree with that. I think that men should be in the home and helping to take care of the kid that they help produce. Um, cause that's another thing too. That's another, that's another thing that, uh, frightens me about having a kid is that even when you're having a kid with somebody, like even if you're in a marriage, 90% of the, the work that goes into taking care of that child does tend to fall on the mother. And so even if you're not in a situation where you're a single parent and you're taking care of the child on your own, a lot of times, like, you will see single mothers in marriages, meaning that, again, they're the main ones taking care of the child and make sure that the child has everything that they need and the father isn't really helping at all. Like, he's, he's helping financially, but he's not, like, you know, easing the load for the mother at all because, you know, like, they aren't changing the diapers or they aren't feeding the, the child. And, you know, it's just, it, it does oftentimes fall on the mother. And I don't always think that's a good thing. And I don't always think that that's a healthy thing. Poor, furious at the fact that I was poor. 
because I, my, my ego, and I'll be honest, my ego is at a point where I didn't understand how other people can afford Ferraris and I can't. I, I would be 18, walk into college, and a Ferrari would drive past, and it would ruin my week. And everyone would be like, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, don't you see? This fat fuck can buy a Ferrari and I can't. Okay. Why? He's not a better man. He's not a better person than me. Let's not I, fat I'm shame. just as good as him, if not better. I couldn't stand the fact that there are people who could do things I couldn't. So this gave me unlimited motivation to get rich. Now, I found a way to get rich, and I believe that anyone who really, really, truly wants to get rich will get rich one way or another. Okay. But that's because it bothered me for the first 10 years. You know, my, 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 my 20s, I was broke most of them. Biologically designed. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, in terms of that, him getting bothered by... I mean, he, did, he admitted it. He's like, it's an ego thing. Like, me seeing someone else succeed when I'm not hits at the ego. And I think that's with anybody, like... You know, when you're struggling or when you have goals set that you want so bad that you haven't achieved yet and you're looking at the next person that has everything that you've been working so hard to get, it does sting. It does sting a little. Not to say that it ruins your whole week. That's dramatic. Um, But again, it's like, and that's the thing too, it's like, you, you can't really take everything he said to heart. <laughs> it's like, you can, you can pick, out little things here and there but you know Zion, we're evolutionarily hardwired to seek status that's yes. what we want men talk about wanting money you don't want money you want power mm. you want power you want status you want the fast car you don't care about the car you want everyone to know you have the car and they can't have the car yeah. if, meaning the female we are with mm. has to add status to our lives in some form mm. that's why we like beautiful women right? right but a beautiful woman who doesn't behave and doesn't obey isn't really much status yep so when we're looking for status we want a beautiful woman who is compliant because it's unique and it's scarcity that provides value. Well, it is unusual. I just mm. don't necessarily, it's not what I'm looking for. So for me, I'm just like, Ugh. I'm heartbroken. I don't know about the point. <laughs> no, but, no, but the point I'm making is everything translates, right? It's a spider's web. If you're gonna find a man who's truly warrior-minded, who's truly conquest-minded, who's truly hard to govern, is he gonna get one chick and let her tell him what to do with his, his life? No, he's gonna be that guy who does whatever he wants. And, and this is where we also tie into loyalty because loyalty is a completely misunderstood concept. You value loyalty. Oh, no, absolutely. But male loyalty, masculine loyalty is completely misunderstood. All these dudes out here who are at home with their wife thinking they're loyal, you're not loyal. Loyalty is having options and returning to the same place. No. Only having one option. They're very different things. If I no. And see, and see, I can hear something like this and be like, you know what? No. Disagree. Moving on. Because, <laughs> okay. Because I'm I'm real I'm really trying to understand what has people like so like tight over this. Maybe it's the fact that you know this man does have an audience, right? He has an audience. People are listening to him for advice and guidance. Which I'll, I'll say that myself. You should not be listening to Andrew Tate for any guidance on life. You should not be doing that at all. I will say that wholeheartedly and firmly. You should not be taking any type of actual real advice like i said i look at this purely for entertainment purposes i am not getting anything from this i'm not looking for anything or any advice but i do understand that there are a subset of men or younger boys that may listen to his content and they might be actually sitting there and taking in the information that he's giving and actually thinking that that's how they should think and that's that's how they should operate and if that is the case, then I can see why people want him to get off the internet. But also, there are so many problematic people out there. I know people crap on, you know, podcasters a lot. But even just celebrities, rappers. Like, there's so many people in the public eye that have horrible ideals. And that are just they're not good role models to look up to but you also can't control who other people look up to you know what i mean and so it's like okay okay sure get andrew tate off the internet but look at some of these other problematic problematic people that are on the internet they're still they're still gonna have audiences like there are still going to be people out there that consume content that you don't agree with and there's going to be people out there that have mindsets that you don't agree to agree with and so you kind of just have to avoid those people i do understand wanting to get rid of the like that toxic way of thinking as much as possible 
but it's still gonna exist with or without Andrew Tate unfortunately and so you know it is unfortunate but you know sometimes people do pick the wrong the wrong role models and so you know it, it it's it, I don't know it's hard come to the store and they only sell apples and I buy an apple I'm not loyal to apples I don't have a choice loyalty is walking in the store where they sell all the fruit I buy apples six days a week occasionally I get a big fat pineapple and I go back to apples the day after that's loyalty I'm being honest when people come yeah, to yeah. Me, I feel this way you're a pussy oh but I feel who gives a fuck how you feel I'm about to break into your house strangle your wife to death who gives a fuck how you feel like your emotion has nothing to do with the harsh reality of this world. You're either successful or you're not. Life is binary. You either win or you lose. You survive or you don't. These, these people are so obsessed with themselves and how they feel. This is my whole problem with the depression thing. On my old account, long time ago, when I was verified, before I got banned, I set the world nuts when I said depression wasn't real. And the world went crazy. Every A-list celebrity, you can still Google right now, depression isn't real, and all the tweets come up. And my point was completely misunderstood. What was your point? And my point was very simple. Feeling depressed is real. Okay. That is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that the reason you feel depressed is so that you are inspired into action. You're unhappy with your surroundings and you're inspired. This is the reason why you don't want to go to jail. Both of us don't want to go to jail because we'll both be depressed. Women are absolutely happy serving a man. Okay, I'm not sure where he was going with that. <laughs> but again, it's like... Clear, clearly clearly he is wrong for saying that depression isn't real and i think the issue too and kevin samuels had the same thing whereas like they would say these definitive broad statements like depression isn't real and you know oh you're not a high value man and or a high value woman or whatever the case may be or you don't deserve a high value man like they say these blanket statements that people are obviously going to disagree with, with no context. And then what did they do? They get backlash for it. It's on all the blogs, everybody's Twitter page. And then someone asks them about about it, right? And then they'll sit there and give context. Like, oh, well, this is what I really meant. And it's like, okay, well, if that's what you really meant, then that's what you should have said in the first place. And that, And that's what I've noticed. It's like when they give context to what they were actually trying to say, the context makes it sound much better and more palatable and so i wish that they would just say what they actually meant the first go around and then maybe it wouldn't come across as toxic you know what i mean because him just straight up saying depression isn't real obviously you're going to offend people and people aren't going to agree with you on that and people are going to be offended but then you followed up with saying well you know obviously the feeling of depression is real then just like just say that saying depression isn't real like say say <laughs> like i i don't know it's almost like they they purposely leave out that context to get people worked up and to get people upset so they can talk about it and then they can be like oh well actually this is what i meant but it's like no it's, it's too late the the message that you were trying to portray is now missed because you wanted a, a clickbait title or headline Women are absolutely happy saying, you know what? I know I have the best man on the planet and I know I make him happy. Women are happy yeah. with that. Yeah, that's true. They're far more happy with that than they are working some fucking career. Yeah. And some garbage. Oh, I have thoughts and opinions and a job. Yeah, shut oh, the bullsh fuck Shut the up. fuck up. Have kids, Dumb sit bitch. at home, be quiet, make coffee. Yeah. I, I don't believe in marriage in terms of an institution, not because I'm against the idea of loving a woman, but I'm so anti-government. I don't want them to have anything to do with me, especially where my dick goes. So mm. fuck them. Okay. You know, I refuse to sign the piece of paper because I just don't want to deal with government. More. Okay. Even what women want out of a relationship. Women don't know what they want. Ah, here we go. They don't. And women men don't either. They, women think they want things and then they get them and they leave the dude. Women, women don't have a clue what they want. I want a guy who's sweet and sensitive and takes disagree. care of my needs and thinks about me. But I disagree. Um, however, I will say, and this is something that I've noticed a lot, especially this year. It, it's really both genders, like. Honestly, like, and, and trust trust me, I do understand all of the slander that um, men get. Sorry, not sorry. But yeah, like, honestly, I think that there are issues <laughs> on both sides. I don't think it's just all men and all women anymore. It, it really is both genders. Like, both genders have some serious issues when it comes to dating. Now, I do agree that there are some women out there that don't know what they want i've actually seen it i actually just watched a video i didn't react to it but i just watched a video 
on my own time <laughs> where it was the whole thing about, oh, well, what do you bring to the table? And literally the women could not answer what they bring to the table and they were avoiding it at every cost. And then when they finally answered the question, it wasn't much. It was like, oh, I can change out the paper towel rolls when it when it gets empty. Like it wasn't even. So I like, yes, some women don't know what they want or what they can bring to a relationship. But I more so see it with men just personally i more associate with men but really it's both genders i feel like a lot of people just don't know what they want in general and so i don't i don't necessarily think that it's gender specific but i definitely don't think that it's only women that don't know what they want i think a lot of men too don't know what they want or they think they know what they want but they don't value those those traits that actually make a long-lasting relationship they're all out there, none of you are with them. Why? Because women don't want that. Women don't actually want that. Women want to be with a man they respect. Women are only going to enjoy the time with and end up feeling in love with a man they genuinely respect. And unfortunately, to be respected, some of the qualities are detrimental to the overall relationships, let's say happiness. I know loads of women who are with a dude they hate, but they respect him. Like, I, I, it makes me so mad, but he is the G. And they stay with him. As opposed to the woman who's like, well, he's so nice to me, but, you know, and leaves. Mm -hmm. So women... Mm, okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, mm, disagree. I still kind of disagree, though. Like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Women do tend to stay in relationships with men that they don't... B both. Uh, people in general. People in general... Are, there are a lot of people in miserable relationships. I'll, I'll just say that. There are a lot of people that are in relationships with people that they don't like. Which I will never understand that. Like, I could never date somebody that I didn't like as a person. You know what I mean? Like, in my last, relation, in my last um, relationship, like, I actually enjoyed being with that. Like, I actually liked them. Like, as a person. Like, beyond even just, like feelings and like stuff like that it's like I just like them as a person I just like talking to them and hanging out with them and spending time with them and hearing about their like I just wanted to be around them because them as a person was really enjoyable to be around and so I don't understand how people will get into full-blown relationships with folks that they don't even like it's like how does that even work I need to respect you as a man How's a woman going to respect you as a man if no other girl wants you? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you're putting her above all your boys? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you're not here in the streets making money? How's a woman going to respect you as a man if you don't respect yourself or other men don't respect you? I see myself as superior to females and not in a negative way. I love them and I adore them. Yeah, see, this is like... Me, but in no way are they my equal. And, and they know that when they're with me. And they, and they like me for that. This is the crazy thing about it. People will say, oh, you're sexist. You're never going to get a girl that way. I'm like... As soon as a woman she finds a man she can look up to and go, okay, you know what? This motherfucker is tough. He's smart. He's strong. His life's in order. He, he's, he's never fucking up. Everything's on track. He's never messed up. He's never had that big rehab moment. He's not an alcoholic. He's never done drugs. His life is completely in order. He's a multimillionaire. And everything's on track for him. And he knows more than me about everything. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, yeah. So, <laughs> again just i don't take this stuff serious it's like okay like i'm gonna go about my day after this and i'm gonna be cool i'm not gonna be thinking about this i'm not gonna be like i just don't let stuff like i don't let stuff like this get under my skin like yes some of the stuff he says is, is a little triggering like oh i think i'm more superior than women but it's like like seriously like like any any people out there it's like do you really want to be with someone like him do you really want to take the mental energy to try and convince this man that what he's saying is wrong like at the end of the day if this is how he thinks he can live in that delusional world but i also understand that he does have an audience and he is in a way influencing his audience to also think that way he's influencing other men to think that it's okay to put down women and to devalue them and look at them as lesser than and i i don't think that that's okay and i don't think that you know people like that should have a platform but unfortunately and I say this all the time, people don't have a platform without the people that support the platform. If Andrew Tate, you know, came on the YouTube scene and no one fucked with his content, then 
he wouldn't be as popular as he is today. It's it's our our fault as viewers as watchers that continue to put energy and life into his content as to why he's so big today. And you know, it happens. People are going to talk, people are going to see this stuff and and want to discuss it. But th- that that is why. That is why you see all these people who shouldn't have a microphone and shouldn't be talking. That's why you see them, you know, saying these things and having these big platforms is because the viewers and like pe- people find them. They find them and they agree with something that they said and then they follow them. And there's not really much control that we can we can do, I guess, other than taking them off the platform. But again, also, I, I don't, I just, I don't think that by taking Andrew Tate off the internet, that is going to magically erase all the misogyny that's on the internet. Trust and believe it was all there before he came on the scene. And if it's not him, it's literally going to be another one. There's, I pro- like, there's going to be another guy that pops up. I mean, literally, you have, like, uh, fresh and fit, you know, fake and fraud out here pretty much doing the same thing. Like, there's there's so many, like, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's a lot of toxic masculinity on the internet. And it's hard to run away from it. All you can really do is try to ignore it and, you know, as a woman, hopefully finding a man that doesn't think like this. It doesn't follow these ideals. And yes, when you have people like him that are influencing a lot of men, you know, in this dating culture, it does make it a little bit harder to find a good man. Um, but you know, that that's just what it is. But again, I really don't think I really don't think that people should take Andrew Tate seriously. I think that the stuff that he does, I, I'm, not, I'm not even saying that he does it for pure entertainment, but I think that's how you should look at it. Like you should, I'm literally telling you to look at Andrew Tate as a joke. Like, the, like all this stuff is, a, it's a joke. It's entertainment. Like I just, I don't take this stuff seriously, but yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Andrew Tate. If you guys agree with him getting kicked off of Instagram and all these different platforms, let me know what your overall thoughts are about him and this whole situation. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys give it a big thumb, big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.